Welcome to Keyence's guide to setting up PLC communication on the GC series safety controller. The agenda for this video is to cover what GC part numbers can communicate via Ethernet, what communication protocols the GC series is capable of using, how to configure the GC for PLC communication in the GC configurator software, and lastly, I'll show you what the data looks like coming from the GC into a Control Logix PLC. The GC series has two main controllers, the GC1000 and the GC1000R. Since the GC1000 is the only model with an Ethernet port, the GC1000 is also the only model that can communicate using networking protocols. The networking protocols the GC series can use are Ethernet IP, Profinet, Modbus TCP, MC Protocol, and UDP. Please note that none of these are safety rated communication protocols so the networking function should be reserved for status or auxiliary data only. Now I'll go over how to make the GC1000 network its information to a PLC using the GC Configurator software, which you can download from keyins.com for free. I've got a link in the description to the software. When you launch the software, there are two ways of connecting to a GC1000, USB or Ethernet cable. If you're using USB, you can make a new file or read out the configuration from here, but if you're using Ethernet, you need to assign an IP address before you can communicate. To proceed with this, at the bottom of the screen, select Ethernet and then select Communication Settings. If you already have an IP address on the GC, you can either directly input the address here, or select your computer's Ethernet adapter and search for any GCs connected to it. If you have not set the IP address, go ahead and start the IP setting tool located at the bottom left hand corner of the screen. The IP setting tool is a boot P tool Keyence makes so that you can establish the IP address on devices that support boot P. You should be able to see the GC appear from here with an IP address not set state. Otherwise, you might need to allow the IP setting tool through the firewall on your computer. For more directions on this, click on the first link in the description of the video. I'm not going to follow through with this because I want to show you how to set up the IP address using USB as well, but once you have an IP address on the GC, find the device on the screen and then select OK at the bottom. Continuing on, I've got USB selected under connection and I'll go ahead and create a new file here. If you've already set up the GC you're connecting to, you can just go ahead and read out the settings from the screen as well. Again, I only have access to networking on the GC1000 not the GC1000R, and overall I'd recommend using standard mode for this procedure. I've got a separate video, which I'll link in the description below, for a guide around the software, so I'll specifically focus on the networking elements of the software. On the left, scroll down until you see the Ethernet options, and double click on the protocol you would like the GC to communicate via. In this example, I'll use Ethernet IP. Since I'm only connected via USB, I still need to assign an IP address to the GC1000. To do this, double click on the basic setting in the middle of the screen, check the box that says transfer communication settings, and now you can specify the IP address and other info on the GC1000. Go ahead and press OK when you're all done. Now we're ready to actually add the IO we plan on communicating to the PLC. If I want to add a communication output, which is a bit of information that the GC sends to the PLC, add a COM out to the program. If I want to add a communication input, which is a bit of information that the PLC sends to the GC, then I'll add a communication input. There's no functional difference between the reset and other communication input, other than that the icons look different and they behave slightly different uh, during the simulation of the GC software. When you add any of these inputs or outputs to your program, you'll see a field where you can assign the offset bit. What this does is it allows you to assign where in the PLC's input or output data that bit lives at. For example, I can look in the manual and see that the COM outs from the GC's program arrive in the Ethernet IP input data starting at integer number 82. In this case, offset 0 would correspond to integer number 82, offset 1 to integer 83, 
offset 2 to 84, and then offset 3, the last one, to 85. Then I just need to choose which bit inside of that integer that information is going to live at. It's a similar process for the communication inputs from the PLC to the GC, but luckily the offset indexing in the GC matches where the index of the data will show up in the Ethernet IP output tags. The beauty of these communication inputs or outputs is that you can have up to 64 of each, and you can define them to have any type of logic that you want. For example, I can have a communication output flag on whenever a certain safety input is on, or if I'm waiting on a reset button to be pressed, or if I have a safety output error, just to name a few examples. As for the communication inputs, I can use them to reset parts of my process or make sure the GC has permission from the PLC before it's allowed to run. Honestly, this is all there is to do in the GC software. Once you're familiar with how to use these communication inputs and outputs, you should have enough information to be dangerous, but in a safe way. Next, I'll hop into what the data looks like from the GC coming into a Control Logix PLC using Studio 5000. I'll start by adding the EDS file we've got available on keyins.com for the GC series. Aside from the name and the IP address, I'll always recommend that you change the data type to an integer. It just makes more sense since all the data is grouped into 16-bit values. If for any reason the EDS file is not working, you can always create a generic module using these settings on the screen and achieve the same result minus the GC icon in the program. Once we have our module made, we can go ahead and use the input and output tags that get created with the module and look at the GC user's manual and track down where in the data map the communication inputs and communication outputs are going to be located. But to save you some time, for Control Logix PLCs, we've made an AOI that's just going to group all of these together into their own little tags so that you don't have to go searching through the manual. You can find that AOI on keyinst.com and download it for free, and then add it following these steps. After it's added, go ahead and drag it into a rung in your main routine, and then we'll have to create three new tags. The first tag at the top that we create is something that we'll never interact with again after we create it. It's where all of the AOI's information lives. The second and third field here are not tags that we're going to create. Instead, they're actually tags that we're going to link. Right? So the GC's module that we just made in the PLC, we need to link its input.data tag here and output.data tag below. The bottom two tags are things that we'll have to create GC1000 control is where we will be able to read in the PLC the communication outputs from the GC and where we will be able to toggle the communication inputs going to the GC1000. The status tag is more for general information such as the runtime or the model information of units connected. 